amber. This ancient fossilised tree resin offers a honey-coloured window on the distant past. Insects and the remnants of other creatures that lived millions of years ago are still visible to us thanks to amber's unique qualities. Entomologist and paleontologist Sam Heads of the Illinois Natural History Survey brings fragments of the ancient past to light by studying fossils preserved in amber. Heads and laboratory technician Jared Thomas are finding insects and plants that were trapped in tree resin 18 to 20 million years ago in what is now the Dominican Republic. Another natural history survey scientist, Milton Sanderson, collected the amber in 1959. He reported on his find in the journal Science, spurning worldwide interest in Dominican amber. Then he stored the amber in buckets at the Natural History Survey, where they remained until Heads discovered them again in 2011. Heads and Thomas are screening every bit of Sanderson's amber, 160 pounds of it in all. When they're done, the collection will be the largest and most complete Dominican amber collection in the world. There are a number of Dominican amber collections uh, in different museums and institutions around the world. Most of them have come from commercial sources and so uh, they've been cherry-picked for the best fossils. We keep all of the fossils we find in the pieces of Dominican amber that we have in our collection. So even if it's just a, a leg or a head or a fragment of, a, of, a, of an insect, we keep that. We don't discard them. And it's going to take a long time to get through this project. We're even looking through the tiniest of pieces because there are really tiny insects that can be hidden there. So you don't want to miss anything. The specimens offer new insights into the lives of those creatures unfortunate enough to have been engulfed in resin. We've uh, come across a baffling array of different insects in the Milton Sanderson collection. We've come across everything from beetles right the way through to ants. The gall midge is, is one of my favorites. Fungus gnats. Stingless bee, which is the proplebia. Mosquitoes. Azteca ants. Spiders. Two mating flies. We've found plant remains, we've found flowers. We even have a few mammal hairs. So we have lots and lots of different fossils in the collection so far, and we're, we're less than 1% of the way through the collection. So. Heads also found the fossil of a pygmy locust, a notable specimen that is the first recorded Dominican amber fossil of its kind. Electrotetics is the new genus of pygmy locust, or grouse locust, and this group are very interesting because the subfamily that they belong to uh, the Cladonotiny are wingless and they don't fly. And this specimen is particularly significant because it does have vestigial wings. You're looking at that, that earlier stage in the evolution of the group, so that's very interesting. The species I decided to name after Sir David Attenborough, who is a famous natural history documentary producer. Well, it's, it's, the, it's the, the nicest compliment um, you can receive from a, from a naturalist, that anyone should, should call this um, distant little insect, I'll carry my name, is, uh, is, 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 is a great compliment. So I'm, I'm very tickled pink here. Yeah. This particular one, uh, Electrotetics, it shows you that uh, that family has been evolving 30 million years ago, or whatever you date it, it had wings, and today, all the members of the family have done, so they've lost it. The pygmy locusts, the gnats and spiders, the crickets and midges and flies are only the beginning of a long process of discovery at the Natural History Survey in Illinois. The findings from the Dominican Amber Collection will be shared with other scientists and with the public thanks to a National Science Foundation grant. For Heads and Thomas, the effort opens a new window on an ancient alien world one that always spurs a sense of wonder. Now that I'm processing it, I'm the first human to ever see anything that's contained inside the piece of amber. So once you polish it up and you find an insect or a flower, I'm the only person to look at it. When you first see a piece of amber, it's very small and it looks like a small stone and that might be where you stop. But it's when you look at it up close that you really start to see the little microcosm that exists in that piece of amber. The preservation of amber is, is 
unique. It, it gives you a range, a sampling of, of what was buzzing around in the air 30 million years ago, uh, which is unparalleled. No other geological period has anything else like that. They're extraordinarily valuable. It's like having a little window into an ancient world. You know, you can sort of look through this this lens and see a glimpse of life as it was at that time 20 million years ago. But this is what we do every day. We screen amber and we look uh, back in time and we see these tiny little things that not only inhabited a, a different world to where we are now, but they inhabited it to a completely different world to some of the larger animals that were around at the time. The world uh, as it appears to a, a mammoth is different to the world as it would appear to a fungus gnat. And the same is true today, you know, insects are, they're, they live in a little microcosm and we as humans don't really uh, get to enter into that world very often, but for us it's an everyday occurrence. We spend all of our time looking at these very tiny little remains of the past.